Good morning all. It's a 555 timer in a stable mode flashing an LED. Nothing unusual there. But one thing that looks a bit strange is that the LED is not connected to the output pin, pin 3. It's actually connected to pin 7, which is the discharge pin. And where you'd normally see a couple of resistors, 8 to 7, 7 to 6, they're not there. There's a single resistor here from pin 3 to pin 2. And this resistor is using the output pin to charge and discharge the capacitor. So I've got all my timing components down on this bottom side and my LED up on the top. It's just back to front. And the reason that this works is because the signal on pin 3 and the signal on pin 7 are essentially the same. They just have different output drivers. If you see here the output from the latch comes to this point, it goes out to discharge through this transistor. Well, that acts as an inverter, NPN transistor, emitter down to ground. And there's also an inversion here. So it's the same signal. It's in the same uh, phase. Output and discharge are essentially the same signal. So it's the same signal, but they're driven differently. You see the output pin here has a high side transistor, looks like a Darlington, and a low side transistor, or possibly two transistors, but it's pulled low with this transistor and it's pulled high with this transistor. So it can either source current if this one is on, or sink current if this one is on. The discharge pins different, it just has a low side transistor, so it can only sink current. Discharge can't source current, but in this application I'm sinking current from the positive rail through the LED and into pin 7. Now that does mean that the LED is on when the output pin is low, when the discharge pin also of course is pulling low, but it doesn't really matter in a flashing LED application. And in any case, if you wanted to use the pin 7 output, the discharge output, to drive another stage, you could, of course, just put a pull-up resistor to provide the, uh, the current source. And then the internal transistor, of course, provides the current sink. And the nice thing about this arrangement is that it's symmetrical. We've got the output transistors pulling up and then down through the same resistor, charging and discharging the capacitor which you don't have in the conventional A-stable circuit. So generally, A-stable circuit is this, where you have the capacitor charges through these two resistors in series, VCC going to the top of the cap, but then when you hit two-thirds VCC and the comparator flips the RS uh, latch, then pin 7 discharge pulls low. Well, that does a strange thing. It puts this top resistor straight across VCC at ground effectively and then it discharges the capacitor through just this one resistor. So it discharges through this one resistor but charges through the two resistors. So it discharges more quickly than it charges. Now you can mitigate that a little bit by keeping this top resistor to a low value because you don't want to go too low because of uh, the fact that when pin 7 pulls low this resistor is strapped across VCC and ground so you want to keep that really no less than about 1k. Now of course I've done my usual thing of not connecting pin 4. The bipolar version of the 555 is normally quite happy to have pin 4 just left floating. The CMOS one not so much. You're better tying that to uh, well VCC if you don't want the chip to go into reset. Now the normal conventional approach is to tie pin 4 reset to VCC but do I actually have to do that? What if I tie it to two-thirds VCC, which is available. It's here. Two-thirds VCC is available on this three resistor, and these are all 5k, this uh, three resistor chain. And two-thirds VCC is actually available on pin five, the control pin. So what happens if I tie reset to the control pin, which we know has two-thirds VCC on it, and of course it's fine, it holds the chip out of reset. It's just a slightly odd way of doing it, but it holds this pin 4 at a voltage high enough 
that keeps it well away from any chance of resetting. What about if I tie it to another pin, which is, well, pin 2 and pin 6, which are actually moving up and down as the capacitor charges and discharges, but they only move between one third VCC and two thirds VCC. So is one third VCC enough to hold the chip out of reset? Well, there's only one way to find out. Connect reset to the little connection between pin six and pin two. And yeah, even that keeps the chip out of reset. It's a truly bizarre way of doing it, but it works. Okay, let's take out this uh, reset connection because it doesn't actually need it on the bipolar version. Now, what about changing the speed of oscillation? Well, of course, I could change the capacitor, but I can also change this resistor, this 100K. Let's take that out. That's a billion, million, infinity K. So that's not going to do anything. Uh, this is pin 3 to pin 2, so I'll shove that across there. This is 10K. And so, of course, the capacitor charges and discharges the camera doesn't really like that that's just flickering at a constant rate although it looks bizarre but what about another way of doing it how about using that control pin pin 5 let's put this back between pins 3 and 2 pin 5 to move the voltages on this resistor divider so if you pull pin 5 down towards ground a little bit this no longer is two thirds vcc it'll be a bit lower this, of course, is always half what uh, the pin 5 voltage is because it's in a resistor divider consisting of two 5K resistors. So let's start by using that 10K to pull pin 5 down to ground, which is there. And yes, that's a little bit faster. Let's take that out and put a 1K in. So we're now using a 1K to slightly skew the value on that uh, chain of three 5K resistors. So let's put that between pin five and ground. And it's faster, but it's gone very non-symmetrical. We've got a lot of, well now, this is showing off time or low time on pin three. When this LED is on, pin three is low. So there's a lot of low time and not much high time it's kind of got a bit distorted. Now what about slowing this flashing down? I thought, what if you pulled this point up when the capacitor is charging, the capacitor is uh, here between a uh, threshold trigger connected together and a capacitor goes to ground. Pull this point up when the capacitor is charging so it takes longer for the capacitor to reach the voltage where the comparator trips and then pull this point down when it's discharging. So the capacitor has to discharge more fully to flip this comparator. And we can do that by connecting the output pin round to the control pin. Not directly, that won't work. In fact, let's try that just for fun. So that would be pin three over to pin five. And that gets it stuck. And it's not surprising because when three, pin 3 pulls low, this point is pulled very close to ground. So the capacitor voltage would have to come down almost completely to ground. But of course the comparator voltage is half that. So you're asking the capacitor, capacitor to come down to a voltage below what it's actually being pulled down to. So yeah, that doesn't work. But if we use a resistor, Let's try that. So let's start with the 10K. I'm going to slightly pull pin five down to pin three. And yes, that slowed it down. Okay, let's go to 1K. Is that a 1K? Yeah, so pull pin five down to pin three a little bit more strongly. And yes, that's really slowed it down. And then I thought, well, okay, it works at 1K. What about go to 100 ohms? And uh, yeah, remarkably, that still works. So pin five is being pulled quite hard through this 100 ohm resistor to the same value as the output pin, pin three. So what this means is that um, the capacitor is no longer 
moving between one third VCC and two thirds VCC. It's moving a much larger distance. It's still got this same 100K, but it's having to move almost up to VCC and almost down to ground, which is why it's slowed down. So 100 ohms works. And then I thought, well, let's just go mad and use 10 ohms. Will that work? 10 ohms between the control voltage pin five and the output pin pin three. And remarkably, and I was quite surprised at this, that still flashes very slowly with just 10 ohms between the control pin and the output pin. But of course it doesn't work if I connect a dead short with this wire. Well, it's going to be some milli ohms, isn't it? Between pin five and pin three, that locks it up. But interestingly, well, it does on, on one side, that actually was charging, hit the top comparator, and now it's discharging, but it never quite discharges low enough because of course we've got this anomaly that in theory it would have to discharge to half the voltage that it's actually being pulled down to. Well, that's not going to happen. Then I thought, okay, well, rather than drive that from pin three, let's drive it from the very similar signal, pin seven. And remarkably, perhaps, that actually flashes. Now, I can't quite get my head around why. And also, it's possible that the LED is instrumental in keeping it flashing because that adds a little bit of pull up. I don't know, but it works. So there we are, flashing LED on a 555 timer. Nothing unusual about that. But here, everything's connected up a bit weird. Cheerio.